Old Sneelock here with another memo from the bunker. Yeah, I'm down here, safe and sound. Same place I've been last four and a half months. Anyways, today's just a story. It was 1974. It had been a long, cold, hard winter because I was unemployed. <clears throat> Home Builders was closed and there was no money coming in. So I was looking for something to do. And I found an ad for LNS products. They were hiring MIG welders. Well, I'd never MIG welded in my life. I took a welding class, but the welding class was at the Career Center, and the teacher uh, ended up telling me, look, you've already gone through everything I can teach you, and tell you what, you can stay, or you can just uh, take an A for the class, and I'll give you the credit. So I left about four weeks early. I should have stayed. They had a MIG welder. I could have played with a MIG welder. But at the time, I owned an arc welder. I didn't own a MIG welder. I wasn't really interested in a MIG welder. I'd done all my work with arc welders. Well, LNS Products, they had a job offer, but they needed MIG welders. I thought, well, I know what a MIG welder is. I know what it looks like. Never turned one on. Never used it, but... The only way I can fail on this is by not going. The worst that'll happen is I'll find out that I'm not a MIG welder. So I went and got in the long line waiting outside the office there at LNS Products, and I was standing about 20 people back. And I thought, there's no way in the world that I'm going to get hired for this job. I thought they were hiring one guy. Well, just so happens that one of the guys that I took welding class with was about three spaces up from me. We'll call him George. And George was one of those happy kind of guys that uh, was convinced he knew everything. So he's telling me about all the experience he's had running a MIG welder and, and uh, how he's going to get the job and everything's going to be just fine. And, we wait there for almost an hour before we can get up. And in the meantime, the two guys in between us gave up and left. So I'm standing there with George. George is in front of me. We come up to the door, and the guy comes out and says, Okay, next. George goes in, gives me a thumbs up. About ten minutes later, George comes walking out and heads on out the door. Guy says, next, and that's me. And I thought, George has got the job, right? Well, why is he calling me back there? <laughs> I went back and I said, I'm going to be honest with you, never MIG welded in my life. Bark welded a lot, but I've never run a MIG welder. The guy says, well, you can't do any worse than the guy in front of you. He welded the part to the fixture. So, he uh, gave me a brief update on how to run a MIG welder, and <laughs> I took to it like a duck goes to water. Loved it. MIG welder's really, really nice. Don't have to wait and get another stick. Uh, you just point the gun, drop your helmet, pull the trigger. It fires off and welds. Works really nice. So I ended up working for LNS Products on third shift. I was there for three months, almost three months. Didn't quite make 90 days. During that time, I welded a lot of stuff. They made display fixtures, kind of like you get at JCPenney and uh, Macy's, you know, the, the clothes hangers. The big thing that they made was this uh, round ring that stood on four legs, and my job was welding the round rings together. It was just a big piece of tubing Oh, about an inch in diameter, and it was rolled, and the two ends of the tube came together like this, and I had to run a bead around the outside of that. Really thin-walled stuff. So the way you did it is you triggered as you went around. You couldn't run a steady bead because it would burn through. So you just 
tack, 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 all the way around the thing. When you were all done welding it, then they ground it. And if you had a pinhole in it, then you were in trouble and you had to go back and fix it. Usually you ended up throwing the thing away. Never had a pinhole. All of mine worked. Just one of those wonderful things that MIG welding works really, really well. So I did that job for, like I said, about almost 90 days. And I had been trying to go to Borg Warner for quite a while. Now my mom was a nurse for Dr. Chapman there in Coldwater. She was the nurse for Dr. Chapman in Coldwater. And her friend, Helen, ran the, the reception area and the, she did the paperwork and the office management. And I had been telling mom that LNS products was okay, but I really wanted to work for Borg Warner, but I could never get him to call me back. Well, mom knew Helen and Helen knew everybody. So Helen called up the person who was in charge of personnel at Borg Warner and said, you need to talk to Dave. So I was told to go out and fill out, fill out an application. So I did, filled out the application and got the job. They put me on a job running a solder dip pot. And the reason I got the job running a solder dip pot, I said I was a welder. I thought that would probably get me the most in, you know. And they didn't need a welder. They needed somebody six foot tall who could pick a radiator up, flip it over, set it on the floor. And then pick it up with a crane, set it on top of the solder dip pot, and be tall enough to reach the top of the radiator with an air hose and blow the solder out. So I got a job not because I was skilled at anything, I just was tall. So I, I did that for a while, and then uh, one day the solder dip pot broke. And the maintenance guy, Jerry Copeland, came over and his boss was over there and they were talking about how they were having so much trouble keeping the studs welded on the end of the solder dip pots because it was a stainless steel dip pot and they had two three quarter inch diameter steel studs, thread, all thread studs, welded to the ends of the solder dip pot. And I said, I can do that for you. <laughs> Jeff Wagner was the boss at the time. He said, let him try. So I ground off the stainless down clean because it was all covered with solder and flux and crap. Soldered the top of the uh, pot clean, or I ground the top of the pot clean, got all the solder and junk off of it. And I ground the end of the threaded rod clean, and wire brushed it, made sure everything was all nice and clean. Took some uh, eighth inch uh, stainless steel rod, tacked it in three places, welded it up, and there it was. Uh, during the six years that I was there, it never came off again. So that was kind of a nice thing to be able to do, to show them what I could do, but I still was running the solder dip pot. Then a job opening came up in the welding department. The guy who used to run the solder dip pot, we always called him Squirrel. His name was John, but we always called him Squirrel. Uh, Squirrel decided he wanted to go work in the press room as a setup guy, better than welding. And I thought, well, welding pays another dollar. So an extra 40 bucks a week would come in handy. So I applied for the job uh, running the MIG welder. And there was another guy that had been there a little bit longer and he got the opportunity to do that. Well, then they decided they needed another maintenance guy. I'd worked three years at the Midwest Foundry. Uh, in maintenance, I could fix nearly anything in the building, and I could weld. I could also fabricate, I could make equipment, I could make fixtures, tables, tooling, you name it, I could do it. Anything maintenance related. Wasn't a machinist. I could run a machine, I could run a lathe, and I could run a drill press. Milling machine never monkeyed with. Anyways, so uh, Jeff had two guys applying for the job in maintenance, and I told him what my experience was. 
and he remembered the deal with his solder dip pot. So I got the job. So for the next five years, I worked at Borg Warner and Maintenance. We put in equipment and set presses and uh, put in conveyor lines and worked on ovens and you name it, we did it. Just all kinds of stuff. It was a great place to work. But I could see the writing on the wall. Uh, every year they were open, they lost not just one or two million, they lost five or six million dollars every year. The idea was it was an R&D plant. They did short runs, you know, uh, prototype tooling, short runs of, they made radiators. That was the whole thing, they made radiators. And made some really interesting ones and some really good ones, but it was just radiators, no other product line. And they had a plant up in Canada already making radiators. The only reason they wanted to have a plant in uh, the United States was if it was across the border from Canada, the Union couldn't cross over. So they could do the prototypes in cold water a lot easier than they could up in Canada. But losing that kind of money, you can't keep going. So I went to UTC as soon as I got an opportunity. And you've heard that story before, and if you haven't, I'll save that for another day. But that's how I got started. Uh, most of my jobs in my life got started because I could weld. Yesterday, I welded a couple of pieces of angle iron for the grinder top rail. Did okay, but man, I'm a far cry from what I used to be. I'm pretty close to the guy who uh, welded the fixture to the part. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.